Afghan hounds today were judged by Dr. John Reeve Newson. Ancient kings of Afghanistan were sure to have a kennel of Afghan hounds. Today, while Afghan hounds often gaze into the distance looking for the wolves, snow leopards, and deer, they were bred to pursue. They are now more typically kept for their beauty and elegance by individuals who are willing to accord them the luxuries to which they are accustomed. This is Afghan Hound, number 37. The Rhodesian Ridgebacks were judged today by Gail Montague. Rhodesian Ridgebacks were developed around the 18th century in South Africa and Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, and they served many functions. They hunted game of all types, including lions, and protected home and family. The trademarks of the breed are the forward growing ridge of hair along their back and their fearless heart. This is Rhodesian Ridgeback, number eight. Salukis today were judged also by Gail Bonacu, and Salukis are another ancient breed, thought to have come from the time of the pharaohs. They were declared sacred by early Muslims, and Salukis were used to hunt by nomadic desert tribes, and as a result were found from Egypt to Persia. They were bred to be sprinters in order to bring down gazelle. Their speed is phenomenal, and their sight Remarkable. This is Saluki, number 40. Borzoi today, we judged by Francisco Chapa. Born to the aristocracy of Tsarist Russia, Borzoi hunted wolves in elaborate ritual hunts. The dogs pursued, captured, and pinned the wolves, holding them until the arrival of their masters. The wolves were then released. Today, the breed's popularity continues in lure coursing events. They are also known to run just for the sheer joy of it. This is Borzoi, number nine. Next, the Greyhound, who were judged today by Gail Bonacue. Ownership of Greyhounds during their earliest years was limited to the Egyptian ruling class, and dogs of their type probably date back prior to 2700 BC. They've been used to hunt deer, foxes, and stags, but their natural quarry is the hare. This breed is probably best known, however, as a racing and coursing dog. This is Greyhound, number six.
Next, the Irish Wolfhound, judged today by Carla Molinari. The earliest Irish literature makes reference to the Irish Wolfhound, and by the 4th century AD, the breed was known in Rome. This is the tallest of all breeds, and one of the largest. Wolfhounds were used for both hunting wolves and the gigantic Irish elk. While they're courageous, intimidating hunters, they are generally calm and gentle by nature. This is Irish Wolfhound, number 31. In today's judging, Dr. John Reeve Newson judged the Scottish Deerhounds. Descended from the greyhound-like dogs of the British Isles, the Scottish Deerhound is described as early as the 16th century. Another of the breeds kept exclusively by nobility, they were considered to be the breed best suited to the pursuit and the killing of deer due to their combination of speed and strength. The Scottish Deerhound remains relatively rare today. This is Scottish Deerhound, number eight. Today's judge for the Ibethan Hound was Carla Molinari. Ibethan Hounds and other the ancient Egyptian Hounds can trace their origins to the pharaohs. It is surmised that the seagoing Phoenicians carried this breed to the island of Ibiza, where it got its name. Due to the scarcity of food, the dogs learned to hunt with great skill, purpose, and tenacity. They are still excellent hunters and watchdogs. This is Ibethan Hound, number 15. Here now, the Otter Hound. Judged today by Kent Delaney. Probably originating as a variation of French breeds, the Otterhound's earliest descriptions are from English works of the 12th century. Used to control burgeoning otter populations, these web-footed dogs are excellent swimmers. They have a heavy, somewhat harsh, oily otter coat. Their working instinct is unfailing. This is Otterhound, number five. Next is the Bloodhound, judged today by Jose Homain de Mello. While hounds similar to bloodhounds were known throughout the Mediterranean region before the Christian era, they reached their modern form in England. This breed is the best known of the scent hounds. By nature, they are docile, but they exhibit a dogged determination whether following a trail or living their daily lives. This is Bloodhound number 21.
Here is the black and tan coonhound, judged today by Kent Delaney. The black and tan coonhounds function is indicated by their name. They are serious when it comes to hunting. Once on the scent, they pursue the raccoon until it's tree, and then announce their victory with loud baying. The breed originated in this country in the 1700s. They can be devoted hunting companions asking only for fresh air and abundant exercise. This is Black and Tan Coonhound, number 14. The American Foxhound, who were judged today by Dr. John Reeve Newson. The American Foxhound resulted from crossing hounds from England and France. Their beginnings predate the existence of the United States and were influenced by owners like George Washington. American Foxhounds are lighter bone than their English cousins and are known for their ability to get along with each other and with other animals. This is American Foxhound, number 11. And now the Pharaoh Hound, judged today by Carla Molinari. As their name implies, the Pharaoh Hound originated with the pharaohs of Egyptian antiquity. Carried by traders to the island of Malta, they flourished and they were eventually declared the national dog. When excited by the hunt or by happiness, this breed is known to blush, causing the nose and ears to flush to a deep rose. They hunt by sight or by scent. This is Pharaoh Hound, number 15. Here now is the plot. They were judged today by Gail Bonticu. The plot is named after a family of German immigrants who moved to America and brought the first representatives of the breed with them. A hunting hound of striking color, it traditionally brings big game to bay or tree. The plot is intelligent, alert, and confident. Noted for stamina, endurance, agility and determination. The powerful, well-muscled, yet streamlined plot combines courage with athletic ability. This is plot number seven. Here is the Red Bone Coonhound. Today's judging was conducted by Charles Olthus. Known for its flashy red coat, the Red Bone Coonhound is a versatile worker possessing the ability to hunt and swim over a different terrain while maintaining speed and agility. The Red Bone dates back to Red Foxhounds brought over by Scottish immigrants in the late 1700s. Red bones possess a natural tring instinct, and they'll track game ranging from raccoons to cougars. This is Red Bone Coonhound, number five.
Now the American English Coonhound, judged today by Kent Delaney. Developed in the United States, the American English Coonhound is an avid hunter, renowned for its speed and endurance. These affectionate dogs require a good deal of exercise, but they make great companions for active owners. The breed is pleasant, alert, confident, and sociable with both humans and other dogs. This is American English Coonhound, number six. Now, the Blue Tick Coonhound, also judged today by Kent Delaney. The Blue Tick Coonhound gets its name from its coat pattern, which is dark blue in color and covered in a ticking or mottled pattern. Owners prize this breed skill in trailing and treeing raccoons and also other small animals. This steady and determined breed can stay on the most intricate of tracks, making it a prize companion for active sporting families. This is Blue Tick Coonhound, number six. And now the English Foxhound. The breed today was judged by Dr. John Reeve Newsom. Fox hunting in England with horse and hound dates back hundreds of years. And the English Foxhound is a part of this long-standing tradition. Over 100 years ago, there were more than 140 recorded hound packs in England. This breed is still kept almost exclusively for hunting. This is English Foxhound, number five. And now, the Norwegian Elkhound, the breed judged today by Gail Montague. Skeletal remains of dogs very similar to the Norwegian Elkhound have been found in Scandinavian archaeological digs dating from the Stone Age. They were the peerless hunters of big game, like the moose and the bear. They are compact and strong with a heavy double coat suited for the coldest of climates. This is Norwegian elk hound number five. This is the Harrier judged today by Dr. John Reeve Newsom. Despite all stories related to ancient heritage, the Harrier is undoubtedly simply a smaller version of the Foxhound. Harriers were sometimes considered the poor man's Foxhound. A horse was not needed to pursue the Harrier as it hunted and the packs could be made up from the dogs of several owners. This breed remains one of the rarest of the hounds. This is Harrier. Number 11.
Now the Whippet, judged today by Francisco Chapa. Development of the Whippet took place in England with the last 200 years. They are a cross of small greyhounds with terrier breeds, later crossed with Italian greyhounds. Bred to race, they've been called the poor man's racehorse and are the fastest domestic animal of their size. But they are also quiet and well-behaved in the house, enjoying a warm spot near their master. This is Whippet number 22. This is the Basenji, and the breed was judged today by Kent Delaney. The Basenji originated in Central Africa and has been around since the time of the pharaohs. They do not bark. When happy, they chortle or yodel. When sad, they wail. They're a very fastidious breed and sometimes clean themselves much like a cat. Known for their intelligence and playfulness, they do not tolerate being ignored. This is Basenji, number 19. Here now is the Petit Basset Griffon Vendian, judged today by Jose Homain de Mayo. A literal translation of this breed's name would be small, low to the ground, wire coated dog from the Vendian region of France. Petit Basset Griffon Vendian is commonly shortened to PBGV in the United States or to just Petits. Used primarily to hunt rabbits and hares. This dog is an alert, bold, and intelligent hunter with great stamina. This is PBGV number 10. Say hello to the Basset Hound, judged today by Jose Homain de Mio. Basset Hounds are characterized by their short legs. However, they're one of the heaviest bone dogs of any breed. Bassets originated in France in the Middle Ages, and they were bred to trail and flush a variety of game. As pets, they have a laid-back, easy-going style, and with their low station, are particular favorites of children. This is Basset Hound number 21. And now, the 15-inch Beagle, judged today by Jose Homain de Mayo. Today, Beagles are one of the most popular of the hound breeds. They are still used singly and in packs to hunt rabbits and routinely participate in field trials held across the United States. This is the 15-inch Beagle.
Here is the 13-inch Beagle, also judged today by Jose Jomain de Mayo. Beagles come in two sizes, under 13 inches at the withers and over 13 inches at the withers, but under 15 inches. Size is the only difference. This breed originated as a part of the packs of hounds used for scent hunting in England. The smaller ones were the first Beagles. This is the 13-inch Beagle. Thirteen-inch Beagle, number 11. Next, we have the long-haired dachshund, judged today by Mrs. Zena Thorne Andrews. The dachshund comes in two sizes and in three coat varieties. If they are 11 pounds or under at one year of age, they are considered miniature. If they are standard, they usually weigh between 16 and 32 pounds at maturity. The three coats are long-haired, smooth, and wire-haired. This is the long-haired dachshund, number 53. Next. The Smooth Dachshund, judged today by Dr. Thomas Jackal. Dachshunds are all considered a single breed regardless of their size or coat. However, they are shown in three variety classifications. The origins of the three are identical. The earliest dogs of this short-legged hound type were from Central Europe. Dachshund type was then refined in Germany. This is Smooth Dachshund, number 29. Here is the wired haired dachshund, judged today by Dr. Thomas Jackal. The origin of the word dachshund is German, and it means badger dog. They were bred to track and follow to ground animals that live underground, like the badger. They needed strength, stamina, and determination to take on such formidable opponents. Today's dachshunds retain these characteristics, but are primarily companions. This is Wire Hair Dachshund, number six.
Judge Mrs. Lee Canalizo has chosen the Harrier for group first. The Pharaoh Hound takes second. The Whippet takes third. And fourth goes to the PBGV. Joined by Gina DiNardo. G Gina is the assistant vice president of the American Kennel Club and she also sits on the show planning committee. I do. It's a busy day. So we've now seen the first of the of tonight's groups, Gina. Yes, Lee Canalizo. That that was a that was a big cut. Oh, she cut eleven out of the, it's a big group and so mm -hmm. you know, she had a lot of work to do and it was a fabulous quality in all the group. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I think and, she did a great job. and some some big winners in there, I, I suspect. Yeah, we had well the Pharaoh Hound was one of the top hounds, and, the, and that's a dog from Sweden who's actually yeah. won the group at Crufts. Oh, very nice. So very cosmopolitan. Yeah, we had a dog from Russia in there. We had dogs from other countries as well. Yeah, yeah, I, n I noticed the the Basenji. Right. The Basenji was from Russia. Yeah. Um, I actually had one best of breed under me in, in Croatia. Oh, really? Earlier in, yeah, in the summer. You get around all those <laughs> countries. I don't, but you do. Tell me, about, <laughs> tell me about the Harrier, because, of course, this is a breed we don't have at our kennel club shows. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, it's more of an American breed. Uh -huh. it, you know, I, I'm not an expert, so sometimes I have to look twice ago. Is that an English yeah. foxhound? Is that a Harrier? But uh, it's a lovely dog. It's very sound. Well, it's a it sturdy, good-moving dog. Yeah, 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 really, yeah. really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the handler on the uh, on on the Harry on the Harrier, that's Susie Oliveira, is it? Yes, correct. She's uh -huh. a professional handler from uh -huh. the United States. Yeah, she did a lovely job. Uh, uh huh. Because they, they, she and her husband, they 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 show quite a cross section of breeds, don't they? I think she's pretty much an all around handler. Yeah. Mm hmm. So we've got the Harrier winning, the Pharaoh in second, then the Whippet. What about what, what about the Whippet? Because competition is always very tough in Whippets. Well, in this the country, Whippets isn't is, it? A, is a very competitive uh, breed in this country, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of competition today. And mm -hmm. this one came up on top, and she did a great job in the group. So mm -hmm. I thought it was a nice choice for yeah. one of the placements. And, and then we have the Petit. Yeah. Now this this is a breed. Um, we've only had them in the UK for a reasonably short period of time, and I think e even less in the States. But my word, they've come the imagination of a lot of a lot of American exhibitors. They're so darn cute, aren't they? Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, those 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 petites. You know, when they move, you can almost see them smile. This one is beautiful, very pretty type, nice uh -huh. face, uh, yeah. moved nicely. Yeah, and it's you know back home, it's it's been very interesting to see how the breed has progressed. N you know, they came like a poor relation and a fairly new introduction to the country. So are they now, popular in your country? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, when you get the petite in the group. You know, most times that's going to be one of the front runners because we we, we have. In fact, I think this year our top pound is is, oh, really? is a PBGV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you v judge those? A, a Do you very judge pretty those? bitch. Um, actually, she was my best best ah. show winner at the, the, the Hound Association, <laughs> our big Hound show. Very yeah, good. Yeah. I'll take your word for it then. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our next group is going to be toys. The toy group. And I think um, Dr. Anthony Donado is going to be judging Someone this. Someone yeah. I know pretty well. Uh -huh. <laughs> Does he have a toy background? 
Well, he's owned a few toy breeds. Uh -huh. He had Brussels Griffons, yeah. and uh, he he loves them. No, you know, he's a working man yeah, at because heart. Because he's more f more famous for one particular breed, isn't yes, he? Yes, Dobermans yeah. is what his uh, favorite breed is. And you should know all about that. I do, I do. It's my favorite breed too, but yeah. I won't put my bias in. Uh -huh. but, but well, he's going to have to downsize a little bit, I think, yeah, today. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's a dog man. He loves all the, all the breeds sure. and all the dogs. So sure. I'm excited to, I've never even watched him judge the toy group myself. Really? Yeah. Shame um, on you. Well, I don't get to travel as much as he does. He goes all over the country showing and I'm, you know, stuck in AKC working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but between, yeah, before that, we're going to have the, the ACE Awards, which are the AKC Humane Fund Awards for Canine Excellence. And those uh, are uh, really uh -huh. cool awards where we highlight dogs in different areas, uh, companion dogs, therapy dogs, search and rescue dogs. Dogs that really contribute to the community. Absolutely, and it's an award that people can nominate their own dogs for, and really? we take nominations all year round, and we, uh -huh. have, hold a, we hold not a contest, but we evaluate all of them, and a committee chooses uh -huh. the winners. and. Uh, so it's a nice special presentation. It's uh -huh. very heartwarming. And are there different categories? Yes, there's five categories. Five categories. Five categories. Five categories uh -huh. And they'll all be highlighted. Yeah, I think they're going to start. Uh huh. Okay, well, let's go and look at these very special dogs. It's going to be exciting. Okay, we'll talk later, yes, Gina. I'll be back. Okay.